the year's worst games. It's the annual Golden Mullet Awards. The games are garbage, but the hair is a thing of beauty. x play starts right now. Hello and welcome to X-Play's Golden Mullet Awards. I'm Adam Sessler, and today you can call me Sean Scoodrow. And I'm Morgan Webb, and yes, I do play bass for Vixen. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. Now, today we give extra special love and attention to a few games that were, well, overlooked during our Best of 2009 special. These games were overlooked because they're soul-crushing. They're beyond dreadful. They're the kind that make you start drinking before noon. We've got awards for six very special games, including Outstanding Achievement in Franchise Suicide and Best Example, Why We Mock Koei. And don't think we forgot about you, horrible movie games. We're going to give you some extra special attention. But let's get to our first award. Most unnecessary remake of a seven-year-old PS2 game. When we first met Rygar, he was in all of his shield on a chain with Spike's glory in the Pepsi-soaked arcades of the 80s. Then that game was updated for the PS2 and called Rygar the Legendary Adventures. Then it was updated under the title Rygar the Battle of Argus for the Wii. Why? Here is where the story begins. Hey, everyone, I need you to listen up. For the next two minutes, let's all pretend like we care that Rygar the Battle of Argus has come out for the Wii. Rygar! Princess! This isn't actually a sequel to the franchise. It's a near-exact replica of a 2002 PS2 game. And nothing makes people reach for their wallets like the phrase replica of a 2002 PS2 game. Now, granted, that game was actually pretty good for its time, but consider this, all they really changed is the addition of Wiimote control. Oh, and now Rygar has prematurely white hair and a strangely intricate sports bra. What do you know about me? But this game is more than just a masturbatory aid for the West Hollywood nursing home. It's also a strong argument against pointless remakes for Nintendo's Funtime Novelty System, aka the Wii. Seriously, the control scheme adds almost nothing to the experience. I guess Tecmo assumes that we're a bunch of mouth-breathing idiots who are still entertained by swinging a plastic candy bar in front of our TVs over and over and over again. Well, it's not 2006, and we didn't just introduce our grandmothers to Wii Bowling. This is old people. What's that? Okay, so here's where we talk about the positives, right? Nope. First of all, there are none. And secondly, this is my show and I'm late for my daily cranberry sauce enema. This is no time to be talking so smugly. Rygar the Battle of Something Something gets a one. What do you think you know? Out of five. I beg you to come and kill me. On paper, Oni Chambara, Bikini Samurai Squad, and Bikini Zombie Slayers, they sound like great ideas. They're zombies, gratuitous gore, and protagonists who dress like they're auditioning for Rock of Love 4. But there's a reason why we're giving these games the mullet for outstanding failure across multiple platforms. It's because they're complete crap. Okay, let's do this. Oni Chambara Bikini Zombie Slayers is exactly what you'd expect. A big pile of <laughs> You can play as two different skanks. Essentially, the entire game boils down to you running from room to room and waving your sword really fast. That's it. They didn't even bother to fix the awkward translation. But this stirring in my chest, it can only be her. I feel stirring in my chest too. Oh wait, no, it's my penis. It's in my penis. Oh, and don't forget our favorite part of the game, point get. Really, guys? Normally, we call this one a guilty pleasure, except that Oni Chambara is incapable of providing even a tiny scrap of pleasure. It's just an exercise in mindless repetition that will eventually make you go blind. And not because you're compulsively masturbating while playing, but because you will stab out your own eyes after 20 minutes. Oni Chambara Bikini Zombie Slayers is a one out of five. Sometimes you just get a certain feeling about a game. It stirs something deep down inside you, something primal, the kind of gut feeling that tells you this game sucks. <laughs> Oni Chambara Bikini Samurai Squad should have a lot going for it. It's connected to an anime franchise. There's more blood than you can shake a hepatitis test at. And the lady parts? Good lord, the lady parts. <laughs> You know what? I think Daddy needs a reminder why he fished this one out of the toilette. 
Okay, exactly what is causing the jiggling on this one? But Adam, there's hot girls in tiny undies running around and being hot in super hot ways. Isn't that worth something? <laughs> no. A one out of five. Now, if you're the gambling type, you can always bet on movie games sucking hard. It happens every single year. Well, joining us now is a man who has been wounded by many, Uncle Jesse himself, Blair Herder. Don't. All right, so let's let's, let's get to these movie games. Yep. Watch it. Uh, G.I. Joe, not really good at all. Uh, you know, there's no way that you can really control it very easily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard to make the game worse than the movie, yet you succeeded. Really right. bad game. Exactly. Well, and the setting is either super, super, super easy, for little kids, maybe, or incredibly difficult and impossible. With with no sense of reward whatsoever. Right, I gotta say, you know what? This is the kind of game that Lance Henderson would hunt down. Mm. All right. Hard yeah. target reference. <laughs> I get it. Uh, I love that Terminator Salvation also uh, definitely comes to mind. Yeah. It was short. It was rushed. It was like nobody actually cared about this game. So they just want to get out as fast no, as possible. No, I mean there was enough skepticism surrounding the movie. Right. Then the game adaptation really didn't offer much. Yeah, and of course, made by Grin, who went under shortly right. after making this game, Bionic Commando. That didn't work out so well for me yeah. either. Yeah. So that wasn't a good deal. And of course, we cannot forget about the three hour long, 60 bucks here, three hour long wanted weapons First of fate. All, what, what? It was like four hours. Okay, okay so fine. Okay. It, it, for $60, it definitely was not enough of a video game to, uh, to you know, to get anywhere. Right. It has some sort of good ideas, the curved bullet idea. Mm -hmm. Could have been good. Would have been a fine little DLC, but it wasn't. It was exactly. a $60 game. Yeah. Yeah, um, that was the problem with that. And then there's also James Cameron's Avatar, which just... Now it sounds like the movie might be good. Oh, and people had the no movie hope is for that be movie. Good. All right, all right. But, uh, but yeah, it? the game... Yes. You enjoyed it? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, the story's bad. It's it's kind of like of the very generic variety, like the right. generic vanilla variety. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. and I think the problem is, is that the actual 3D technology in the game is amazing, and they said, "Oh, we've got this. That's all people want. We don't need to make a game." Yeah. Right. Right. Well, it's and the then kind they of game I would throw through a window. Hard target reference. I got it. The problem is like right. that nobody actually has a 3D TV in their house. Right. That's the problem with that. Right. right. Talk uh, about that also, one. there's Godfather 2. Right. Mm. This one doesn't quite live up to the movie. I don't know how it could because I don't remember much action in Godfather 2. I remember a lot right. of good acting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this had which is always kind of the basis for for the Godfather. Uh, in this one. You right. Just... You're you're a main man. You actually have guys that you know work with you and, and fight for you. It actually makes the game incredibly easy. Though, yeah. The I problem. Mean, there, there's there's a point in the game where you can just write a stern letter to other people and you get their territory. And right. And there really is no need to. Yeah. Actually, play. Yeah, yeah, you have to try to die. Yeah. There's some very unpolished characters and that kind of thing. Yeah, like and they I, haven't actually know, put any work in. And the it. first game wasn't so bad, and so that's what was surprising about this game is that it was kind of one of those situations where maybe you shouldn't have tried to do anything different. You kind of should have just done the first right. game again. But at the yeah. same time, I mean, the Godfather 2, the setting, the air raid, none of it makes much sense. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway. So uh, you guys stick around. I mean, why wouldn't you? We look ridiculous. And we've got more gold mullets on the way, including the peripheral that killed Christmas. If you find any of the games from this show under your tree, punch Shana in the face. Yeah. Or your parents. Yep. Dad. We'll be right back. Welcome back to X Play's Golden Mullets, a celebration of the year's worst games. The next one to be honored is Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2. There have been so many Dynasty Warriors games over the years, so many sequels, that it gets a special award of its very own. Best example of why we mock Koei. If there's one thing this world needs, it's a forgettable sequel to an unremarkable spin-off of a franchise that hit the wall half a decade ago. Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 is exactly that game. This series has not aged well, and there are a wide variety of crucial design flaws that somehow still remain unaddressed. But you know the old saying, if it is broke, don't fix it. It's extremely repetitive. To be fair, the game offers up some combos and you have the ability to thrust and block, but let's just be honest here. The combat is extremely limited in its variety. You'll be spending most of your time hitting the same two buttons over and over again while wishing you'd spent your money on literally anything that isn't this. Ooh, boy. You'll have to do better than that. The textures and overall graphical look would suggest PS2 game, but this is running on the PlayStation 3, and despite the lo-fi visuals, it still can't manage a draw distance of over 20 feet. 
which means that bad guys constantly pop up out of nowhere. Artificial intelligence is largely absent from the proceedings. Both your allies and enemies seem equally apathetic. Oftentimes, they just stand there and stare at you. It's like being the only person at the office who actually has work to do. Fans of the anime will be happy to know that the music, character designs, and voice acting have been directly grabbed from the TV show. Did you just step on me? Unfortunately, those fans will have to suffer through the game in order to experience them. Damn, that's it for me. Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 gets a 1 <laughs> out of 5. There are some games that are so bad, they're kind of good, like Earth Defense Force 2017. But then there are games that are so bad, they've gone past good and back to bad again. And then there's Darkest of Days, winner of the award for most comically depressing thing since the Juggalo Baby Funeral. Playing Darkest of Days is like getting tied to a chair by a video game developer and punched in the face over and over and over again. This game slash hallmark of electronic vacuity begins at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. As a member of Custer's army, you get shot with an arrow in what appears to be your junk. Then a glowing plasma ball materializes and out steps a future soldier who whisks you off to a laboratory where a woman with a horrible accent tells you that you have to fix anomalies in time. You are in the future from your perspective. God in heaven, I wish I had just made that up. But no, that literally is what happens. You'll be aided by Agent Dexter, a gruff ex-firefighter who never met a swear word or cliche he didn't love. I guess you're the f new guy. I wasn't asking for you. Advice. Can't believe we made it out of that cluster. All right, already, we get it. You're a grizzled veteran. You wonder why you're here or why I'm here? Yes. God, yes. The game makes you suffer through several famous historical battles, which prove educational. Hey, kids, did you know the Battle of Antietam looked like a badly programmed N64 game? Stay in school. Also, using anachronistic weaponry in period battles isn't as fun as it sounds. Yep, nothing makes you feel like a big man quite like shooting a Native American in the face with a laser-equipped semi-automatic rifle. Hey, maybe there's a button that lets me fire smallpox infected blankets. The AI is so bad that enemies often don't look at you even as you murder their friend who is standing right next to them. And graphical glitches like this one aren't exactly helping. Much work still needs to be done. Yes, it does. Although VGA graphics were invented decades ago, Darkest of Days only features three colors, green, brown, and extra brown. The game gets the specifics wrong as well. I'm not a weapons expert, but I think that the ammunition belt is supposed to get pulled through the gun, not just shake. Oh, game developers, it's so cute how you don't know how anything works. On the upside, uh, well, there probably won't be a sequel. You gentlemen are not exactly building a great track record. Darkest of Days gets a one. Wanna bet you piece of shit? Out of five. That last song you heard? It's from the Ripper's first LP. <laughs> I know you think the Golden Mullets Awards are the pinnacle of television, but something even bigger is on the way, my friends. X plays 1,000th episode. In this hour-long event, we're going to look back at some of the show's best and worst moments, which I'm sure are worthy of some Golden Mullets on their own. Plus, we're going to have a marathon of your favorite episodes from past years. Do not miss X Play's 1,000th episode extravaganza, February 1st, only on G4. And stick around because we've got more mullets to give, including the prestigious award for worst game that sort of sounds like X Play when you say it fast. The suspense is killing me. What is it? We are back. Welcome back to X-Play's Golden Mullet Awards, a special look at the year's worst game. So after lackluster sales and the success of EA Skate, Activision decided to take the Tony Hawk series back to the drawing board. Yeah, a few years later, we get a $120 plastic skateboard, which, last I checked, is already down to 70 bucks. The award for outstanding achievement in franchise suicide goes to Tony Hawk Ride. Yep.
Tony Hawk ride may go down in history as the game that finally ended the motion control craze. The game's developers have taken a cue from the Wii Balance Board and packed in a wireless skateboard controller. The peripheral is solid and durable, but there's just one problem. The game is an enormous piece of crap. Now get in there, let's do it. To help us demonstrate, we've invited X-Play's number one fan, Gamertag, to... Uh, what are you wearing? Hey, Morgan, it's great to be here. I'm dressed up like Christian Slater from Gleam in the Cubes. And I'm getting ready to gleam my own cubes on Tony Hawk's ride. That's, um, really precious. Look at me, skating the Tony Hawk way. Awesome. Anyway, as you'll quickly find, the controls in Tony Hawk Ride are largely broken. You lift your nose to Ollie and slide your foot alongside the board to push. Now that you know how to stand on the board and push, it's time to start the fun. Actually, Tony, the fun never really starts. Grinds! Grinding objects is a blast. Yeah, not really. Manuals are surprisingly satisfying to pull off, but as you might expect, many of your movements don't register on time. There's kind of a delay when I do everything. Um, especially when I'm skating. Yeah, and even when it works right, the game never really feels like skateboarding. On easy mode, you don't even steer the board. It's like the skateboarding equivalent of an on-rail shooter. Let me ask you this, uh, is, should I be experiencing a burning sensation in my shins? Not unless your lower legs had sex with a meth-addicted prostitute. The repetitive nature of Ride is just another reason the game should be buried six feet under the earth and never be heard from again. Maybe I could just use the controller? Unfortunately, the answer is no. The gameplay has been built around the busted peripheral, so the open world elements of previous games are gone. There is absolutely no scenario under which Tony Hawk Ride would provide even the slightest hint of pleasure. Well, what if I actually take it outside and skateboard with it? Well, we paid 120 bucks for it, but there's nothing you could do to make it more broken. Do you want to have a skateboarding montage set to terrible punk music? Morgan, it's my destiny. On one level, we have to admire Tony Hawk Ride for its Hail Mary Pass attempt at revitalizing the franchise, but the laggy motion controls, unresponsive steering, and repetitive gameplay make this a one. This is a true Cinderella story. Out of five. See you at the next cube we're gonna glean. Our final golden mullet of the night goes to a game that has some nonsensical plot about gods, artifacts, and darkness. The award for worst game that sort of sounds like x Blade when you say it fast goes to x Blades. If a 13-year-old boy were able to program a video game, it would probably look a lot like x -Blade. And no, that's not a good thing. Ha! What next? In this misguided Tomb Raider knockoff, you play as Ayumi, a treasure hunter who apparently is the best there is. I'm a treasure hunter, and frankly, I'm the best there is. Right. Her superpower is that she doesn't wear pants. Instead, she actually walks around in a thong the entire game. Classy. Leave it to the Japanese to come up with something so blatantly sexist. Um, except that this game was made in Russia, the birthplace of vodka-based alcoholism and babushka dolls. The combat is stunningly repetitive. Most of the time, you'll be firing off your sword gun hybrids, but you can also use magic. It's like Devil May Cry minus any potential enjoyment. Enemy types are also dismayingly uncreative. They range from tiny dinosaur to lizard men to something that appears to be a furry. Stop. No one can touch the artifact. I'm sorry, should you be yiffing in a fur pile right now? Look, this is terrible. Yeah, right. Even if it didn't feature juvenile wardrobe decisions, x plates wouldn't produce even a hint of pleasure. Avoid, avoid, avoid. It's a one. Your time is over. Out of five.
Coming up on Next Play. Grab a friend because we'll reveal our picks for the year's best co-op days and show you which titles you'll need to keep an eye out for in 2010. Then we go all access with Pro Gamer T Squared and get an in-depth behind the scenes look at the MLG Superstar in action. Find out if you have what it takes to go pro and make a living playing video games. And firearm aficionado Mr. Sark counts down his top five shooters. If you're looking for an action-packed game, look no further. All that and more, don't miss it. Do you think if we sent these to the game companies, they would proudly display them in their lobbies? Oh, I think so. Yeah, we should do that. It'd be then. really Absolutely. nice, you know, just next to those other, you know, gold shiny things. Yeah. It's, it'd be the first award they ever received for those games. Yeah, yeah. we'd also like to thank um, Devin for these. I know. Yeah, oh, thank Devin, our makeup guy. Yes. Thanks. Well, I know. Lovely. Wilford Brimley's going to shoot me with an arrow. Up next, Tech.